Before you dismantle your society, you should see this. Data up to the 26th of March. The UK Chief Medical Officer has declared a worst-case scenario with 80% infected, 53 million Britons, and a 1% death rate, 530,000 Britons. Here's what that looks like to Britons versus the reality in Germany, the UK, Italy and Norway. Not everyone who is infected shows symptoms, so let's see what the CMO is telling us could happen in terms of cases. Here's the reassuring picture of the CMO's 80% infected, with 80% of the infected showing symptoms, and a second chart with 20% of infected showing symptoms. It's still not a very reassuring picture, nor is it even close to a realistic picture given the real curves shown in the picture. To show how unrealistic it is, let's use a social media and government trick and use linear scales, not logarithmic. The CMO scenario is so extreme that the real-world scenarios that are actually happening aren't even visible. Is it any surprise that Britons went into lockdown meekly when their parent government assured them that such an extreme threat was real? Anybody old enough to remember WMD? Our goal is to put CV19 into perspective so that you can make a calm and rational decision. From January 1st, 2020 to March 26, 2020, approximately the COVID-19 scenario to date, 13 million people have died. They just didn't die of the coronavirus. Overwhelmingly, these deaths were invisible to you. You did not fear them or react badly to them. They were not a media-focused issue. 20,834 deaths, by contrast, have been presented as a massive crisis and a significant threat to your life. Is that true? In China, the situation is over. Reported new cases are down from around 5,000 a day to typically 100 a day. Of the 27,000 people who die every day in China, six currently die from coronavirus. Of the 1.386 billion people in China, 3,293 died, confirmed cases, from the coronavirus. In the same period, 2.5 million Chinese died from causes which didn't make the Western news. In the worst hit province, Hubei, with a population of 59 million, 3,085 people died from the virus. In the same period, 86,000 people in the Hubei province died, just not from the virus. 67,794 cases in a population of 59.17 million represents a risk of catching the virus and showing symptoms at 0.11%. 3,085 deaths in a population of 59.17 million represents a risk of dying from the virus of 0.005%. Compare that to ordinary mortality rates in France by age, whose data was most readily available. Risk of dying from non-virus causes at 18.02%, at 45.2%, at 75.2%. Overall, 0.92%. For a proper comparison, we need to factor in the risk of catching the virus, 0.115% in Hubei, and then the risk of dying from it, 0.2% to 14.8% according to age, as published by China CDC. Here we have the calculations with normal mortality, the infection risk, death risk, and the virus mortality. Normal mortality versus virus mortality for an 18-year-old is 91 times more dangerous. Normal mortality for a 45-year-old, 444 times more dangerous. For a 75-year-old, 218 times more dangerous. If the West experiences the virus to match the worst case that China experienced, Hubei, 
ordinary life will be between 91 and 444 times more dangerous than the virus. Yet I do not see societies willingly deconstructing themselves just because of the high risk of dying in ordinary life. Let's track the progress of the virus in the rest of the world and compare it to the experience in China. It doesn't just spread exponentially until it gets everybody and then we all get sick and die. If that's what you're afraid of, be careful who you read and listen to. We modelled the propagation and as you can see our simple model matched China remarkably well. A population starts out untouched and those touched by the virus become either carriers, no symptoms, or cases, symptoms. Notice that the model does not require social distancing or lockdown. It is simply that our immune systems handle it effectively. Let us compare 15 countries plus China and Hubei using World Health Organization data from its coronavirus situation reports. Here are cumulative cases of China, Hubei and Guangdong for reference on a log scale. With log scales, constant geometric growth, exponential growth, is a straight line. Diminishing growth will curl over with the line becoming less steep until the curve plateaus with no further growth. The first sign that the crisis is over is the diminishing rate of growth, curl over or flattening curves. The next sign is peak cases, fewer new cases per day. Finally, the new cases will be so few as to be insignificant. These charts have data up to the 26th March 2020. Here we see all 15 countries that I track, broadly following a similar progress for the virus. Italy, green, is the only country to have gone slightly beyond Hubei in cases per 100 million population. Projecting its curve, we suspect Italy may go as high as 260,000 cases per 100 million population. That would be a rate of 0.2% sorry, 0.26% infection of the population or 1 in 383 showing symptoms, confirmed cases. Norway, blue, like Italy, is curling over, so we know the crisis is over, just not the contagion. We suspect that Norway will plateau at 165,000 per 100 million population, 0.16% or 1 in 611. Germany, red, is not quite so clearly curled over. We suggest 193k per 100 million, 0.19% or 1 in 517. UK pink, started later, is barely curled. We suspect 202k per 100 million, 0.2% or 1 in 493. Note that the UK projection is independent of lockdown. The effects of lockdown will modify the curves starting in perhaps 6 to 15 days or the second following to fifth following data point. Thailand, yellow, is indeterminate we do not feel comfortable treating it as curling over. Italy and Germany look to be past peak, provided they don't relapse. Italy's curve is so pronounced, we consider that unlikely for Italy. Iran and Iraq have well-developed curl over, though Iraq is not flattening, which is a concern. Russia, South Africa and Algeria we consider to be uncurled, still climbing, unfortunately. Although with well-developed curlover, Iran is not at peak, new cases diminishing. All these countries seem at risk of undiminished growth of new cases for the moment. The Americas are perhaps the most frustrating charts, and we've included Israel here also. There really seems to be no evidence of curlover. It seems to be a race to get to Hubei. The irony of the most isolationist countries, US-Israel, being least able to be optimistic for the moment is not lost on me. I am tempted to suggest that the more you resist infection, you may slow it, but it just prolongs the agony. With well-developed curves, Italy and Germany are, I believe, at peak, Norway close, and UK close after that, or we would have been if we had not been locked down. 
A little patience and the UK could have been done with the virus a week or two after Italy. Now we'll have to endure both lockdown and the virus. A little recklessness on the part of the US and Canada and they too could have been much further along. They will endure even longer periods of fear, lockdown and still the inevitable disease until this is out of their system. Frankly, I think it's something better to be just done with. There's no question of peak at this point. We're still waiting on curlover, signs that a well-developed contagion is being absorbed, rejected and tiring in numeric terms. We do understand that viruses probably don't get tired themselves, but until the US accepts the virus, its immune system can't reject it. There are some critically important things from looking at these charts. First, the virus will diminish naturally of its own accord, courtesy of our immune systems. Second, once the lines start to curl over, flatten, the crisis is over. The virus progress is diminishing. New cases will continue to grow pre-peak, but the rate of growth is slowing. Third, we can determine the severity of the saturation by the height of the curve, cases per 100 million population, and compare to China and Hubei for reference. Overall, before you engage in measures massively damaging to your livelihoods, your economy and your liberty, consider carefully what we've seen in these charts and in China's experience. Fifteen countries all show broadly similar curves, consistent with China and Hubei, regardless of their lockdown strategy or lack thereof. If you choose to deconstruct your society, do so as a free choice to model something better. Decisions made out of fear and poor analysis tend to be bad decisions. It's not difficult to check these numbers, and being properly informed is the best antidote to the fear virus that is being actively pushed right now. That truly is a pandemic. Your immune system is the best defense against the coronavirus. Your brain is the best defense against the fear virus. Use both, trust both, strengthen both. You're going to die. That's just life. It's just exceedingly unlikely that coronavirus is the thing that's going to kill you. Thank you for listening or watching. Feel free to get in touch. Andrew at peerlessreads.com or andrewamather.com. Either should get to me.